Good evening, everyone. Today, I'm very happy to stand here in front of a diverse and talented audience to talk about a topic close to what I'm doing right now. And I think it also relevant at the moment. So let me introduce myself a little bit. My name is Bao Dai. And recently, I'm a Google developer expert in Singapore. I'm also pursuing my master's degree in artificial intelligence at National University of Singapore, or you can say NUS. OK, so before we get started, I have a small challenge for you. As you just listen to the music play in the background when I work in here. So can you guess who is the composer of that music? Uh, oh, okay, we have a performer, uh, D.R.I. He he also a music producer. Do you believe he's the pro producer of that music? Okay, so the answer is that the music you just listened to is not composed by a human. This is AI generated music. Does it sound good? Yeah, it's really good because you can barely recognize whether it is AI generated or human composed music. And the best part is that this is copyright free, so you can ask our event organizer if you want to use that music for your vlog on YouTube channel or just for listening. Feel free to request, and I'm more than happy to share it with you. Okay, so the topic today is orchestrating algorithms, hopefully persevere with AI-generated music and beyond. So we'll be exploring the world of AI-generated music and how the process of building such applications bring me valuable lessons regarding solving the own result. So let's get started. So as you might wonder how I create the music, so this is my code. I just prepare all the things from training. So here's the inference, as you can see. If we want to create music, we can run this functions. And we have a folder, empty folder on the desktop. So if we, work, if we run the, the, the code line, so it will generate the music into that folder. So as you can see on the log, it generates 10 songs and the name is randomly named. So the code is executed in like one second. So if we back to the folder and all the songs are populated, we can pick one song and play it in a digital audio workstation. So this is a MIDI file, we can play it in like a piano virtual instrument. It's kind of sad. is changed to major, right? So if you want to generate more songs, we can back to the code and then change the hyperparameters. For example, like I would like to change to 20 songs and then run the code and all the songs will be populated in the folder. So that's what we call AI music generation. <laughs> so that's what, that's the project I was working on so far. Uh, okay, so today I will share with you a little bit about the background of AI. So firstly, we can check out the background of AI first. So we have artificial intelligence or AI, which is like computer system that can do tasks requiring human intelligence. For example, logic, reasoning, or decision making. We have machine learning, which is a subset of AI where it can do tasks without explicitly implementations. And it can learn from experience from a large amount of data. And next, the state of the art of AI, the deep learning, which is again a subset of machine learning where we introduced new concept called neural network. And it allows the system to learn from even more complex data. So to work with music, I choose the model called long short-term memory, or you can say LSTM, and all of these formulas 
might make you unhappy, right? Because it's so formal. So no worries, I will try to explain that to you in a less formal way. So all these formulas are come from linear algebra subject, and it allows the system to learn from a large amount of data from, of music, MIDI file. And the best part is that it can allow the model to forget irrelevant information and just keep the relevant information. So all of these things you just saw, let's address a thought-provoking questions. Do you think that I has emotions? Okay, there's someone coming to me raise an unresolved problem like that. Like AI right now can draw images, it can compose music, means that it has emotions and it's going to rule the world soon. So do you believe so? How many of you believe that I have emotions? Not so many. <laughs> How many of you believe that I have no feeling? Okay, well, okay, many of you got it right. So the answer is that I had no emotions. So while the music it creates might evoke emotion in us, but the emotion connection comes from the listener, not from the AI model itself. So there's a well-known saying that perfectly addressed this idea. Love is in the eyes of the beholder. So in this case, we can say emotions are in the ear of the listener, right? So all the, all the neuroscience papers show on the screen right now, they say that emotions are complex psychological state of human brain in response to some stimuli, and it has nothing to do with the linear algebra you just saw. So we can say, so we can say that it has no emotions. It's for sure. And because emotions is uniquely human experience, setting us apart from computers and AI. So I think that not only do we need to preserve, preserve our emotions, but also try to enhance it so that we can succeed, we can grow up. And one key benefit of embracing our emotions is the ability to persevere with the results, including five good aspects, motivations, compassion, resilience, innovation, and personal growth. To illustrate those good aspects, I would like to share with you my story. So back in the days I was working with AI Music Generation, I had a vision of creating a masterpiece using AI. But the initial output is not what I expected. The quality is far from what I hoped. The melody is erratic. The rhythm is really off and everything is disjointed. So it was a big problem, big unresolved problem and I was uncertain what to proceed next. However, instead of giving up, I tried to stay back and think on the approach. I tried to fine tune the model parameters and train the model on more data. And gradually I can see improvements in the output of the model. But the best part is that during the process, I can learn about myself. I know my weaknesses, I know my strengths, I know many, many more and also the ability to endure setback. So stepping beyond trivial perseverance is thoughtful perseverance, where it can make significant difference in the face of unresolved. So back to my story, in the early days, I was for the assignment to explore this knowledge, but there's a lot of strong resistance for my friend, especially musicians. They fear that AI will replace them if I succeed. Like affecting the income, affecting the business, affecting the career. Moreover, they argue that AI has no emotion, it lacks emotional depth compared to human composed music. And that using AI would destroy the emotion factor of music. So I lost a lot of friends. <laughs> Okay, so this strong reaction made me question my all project. I don't know whether I was on the right path or not. I don't know whether my project has negative impact on the music industry or the emotional factor itself in music. I consider stopping the project. However, after a long period of thoughtful reflection, I realized a few things. So first, we know that AI doesn't have any emotion, right? But it doesn't destroy them either. And it's just a tool that we can facilitate our work. And 
It's just a tool only. It doesn't destroy any emotions. Secondly, I realized that AI, like any tool, is only as influential as its users. AI cannot replicate musicians unless we allow it to. So as you know, musicians are artists that create arts based on their unique feelings, unique emotion, unique experience, and these human qualities, AI doesn't help. So that means it cannot replicate musicians. So with these insights, I decided to continue my project with a renewed perspective. I was more determined than ever to continue my project, and I want to prove that AI is just a tool that facilitates musicians' work, doesn't replicate them. So, so that's my story, and we can address some other story in real life that you might know. So we have Tesla and Elon Musk. So Elon Musk started Tesla a long time ago, and he faced many challenges from skepticism from critics who doubted the future of electric car. And there was time the company on the fringe of bankruptcy. He learns from his failures. He keeps persevering. And today, Tesla is one of the best companies regarding electric cars. And the next example is Apple and Steve Jobs. You know that Steve Jobs was banned from Apple, right? He co-founded Apple, and then he was banned from Apple in 1985. But he didn't give up. He just continued his creative by finding another company next, and Pixar, and then he pushed the boundary of technology. Then he carried it back to Apple with the best products ever, iPhone, iPod, and iPad, right? And then his thoughtful perseverance transformed Apple into the most valuable company in the world. Next to Netflix, everyone knows Netflix, right? But do you know this person? It's Reed Hastings. Reed Hastings formed Netflix by a DVD by mail service, and he saw that potential in terms of online streaming. But at that time, there's nobody believing that. But he keep suffering, and then Netflix become one of the best company in the market of entertainment. And the last example is Google. Everyone knows Google. Sergey Brin and Larry Page. The thoughtful perseverance point is the algorithms they proposed, which rank website based on inbound links. But at that time, there's many doubts. No one believes in that. But they keep going, keep going, and then they become successful. So all of these stories are their story. And I think we all can make our own story too. So to help you incorporate thoughtful perseverance in your own life, I have listed out some of the strategies that you can start implementing today, like practice empathy, open to feedback, and develop your EQ. So all the three, the first three strategies should help you to understand everyone around you. So this is really important. And the next three strategies are practice effective communication, do critical thinking, and do reflections. These next three strategies help you to be understood. Yeah, you understand everyone and then be understood, which means that we seek the common ground between you and everyone around you. This is really important because we don't want to lose any friend, right? Everyone needs to know what you're doing and understand you. And the last three strategies, we need to keep going. So all of these strategies doesn't mean anything if you just do it once. Just keep going, stay committed, be patient, and be adaptable so you can reach your goal readily. Okay, so before I end my presentation today, I would like to share small notes with you, especially in the time of like challenging time where AI dominates many aspects in our life. So if you reflect on the history of creativity, you will see this pattern. Long time ago, we draw images like manually. We have a physical canvas. We draw on that. We call this art. And then we have computers. Computer appeared. Then we draw things digitally using a Wacom tablet. And it faced controversy. But gradually, people accepted it. 
And now we have AI. Many people draw images using AI. And it faced controversy too. And can you guess? They tend to accept it as a common. So, in short, the art of creative is a process by which artists use the tool at the moment to create. Yeah, so what defines creativity comes from the tool they use. So AI will undoubtedly change the way we create, but it won't change the demand for creativity, right? So instead of fear it, we need to learn it and master it. Mastering AI will open many possibilities for innovation that will never happen before. So that's why we don't need to fear anything. We don't need to fear linear algebra. Just try to embrace it, embrace new technology. That's it. So I hope that you carry some lessons today, and I hope that you enjoy the show today. Thank you.